What's going on guys? Welcome back. Stefan here from App Stuff, and in this tutorial, we're going to dive into one of the core concepts of Swift, which is error handling with do, try, and catch. So before we jump into the exciting world of Swift concurrency, it's important to have a solid foundation in how to handle errors with Swift. So understanding do, try, catch is essential because when you're dealing with asynchronous code, managing errors becomes even more critical. In today's session, we're gonna work through a practical example of encrypting messages as we can see on the simulator here, which will not only help you grasp error handling, but also prepare you for the more advanced topics ahead. So let's go ahead and get started. And before we hop into the code guys, the full version of this course, the pro version of this course is available on the website at stephancodes.com in the fundamentals section here. So this is obviously just one of the modules taken from the course that I'm posting on YouTube for free. If you guys want access to the whole thing with a bunch of additional modules and more in-depth explanations and better examples, go ahead and check us out at stephancodes.com. And that is available for a one-time purchase or you guys can sign up to become a member with us. And for less than a coffee a day, you guys can get access to all of our pro courses and app templates. So that will allow you to sign up for any one of these courses, our pro app clones, our fundamentals. It also gets you access to all of these app templates. We just launched this amazing new design library that you guys will get lifetime access to as well. And guys, the, for that low cost a month, you get access to all of this stuff. It unlocks the entire site with the exception of the pro plus content. That is a higher tier of content that we just introduced. And if you guys want access to that, you can become a life member to get full unlimited access to everything, including pro plus content. So guys, let's go ahead and jump back into the code now and get started with the rest of this module. So as you guys can see here, I've created this DTC module, which stands for do try catch in this folder here. So you should go ahead and do the same. And let's go ahead and just get started with our UI guys. So we're gonna build out something that has the original message and then the encrypted message. And we're obviously gonna build out the functionality to encrypt our message. And in a bonus video, we're gonna go over how to decrypt the message as a fun exercise as well. So let's go ahead and replace this text with, that says hello world with our message, which is going to then interpolate whatever our message is going to be. So we can say let message equal hello world for now. And let's go ahead and just drop that in there. And then we need to wrap this up in a V stack guys to display our original message and our encrypted message, right? So that's gonna look like this encrypted. And then for now, it's just gonna be this original message. So next up guys, we are going to create an encryptor and that's gonna be this pretty simple struct that I'm just gonna paste in here. You guys can go ahead and pause the video and type this out or reference the source code. It's basically just a struct that's gonna have a function that is gonna give us back an encrypted message. It takes in the original message and a password and then uh, goes through some encryption jargon, right? Like this is pretty simple and straightforward. That's how we get this encrypted message back. So next up guys, let's go ahead and then drop our encryptor into our struct, which like so. And then we are going to create a property for our encrypted message as well. So I'm gonna just paste that in here. And I know that was kind of quick guys, but I, do, I don't wanna waste a bunch of time to like typing all this stuff out. So you guys can pause the video and type this out yourself or just reference the source code. So um, now let's go ahead and replace this with encrypted message. Oops, and make sure that this looks good. So that looks great. So next up guys, we are gonna go over how we can start using do, try, and catch to ultimately implement error handling in our code here. And the reason we want error handling guys is so that we can write safer, more efficient, more robust code that can handle potential errors and let us know what's going wrong, when and where. So right now we have zero error handling, right? Like let's imagine that the user passed in a blank password and our encrypted message was just a reverse message. That's obviously not a very strong encryption, right? Uh, so we're gonna wanna implement some sort of error handling into our encryption method, guys. So one option would be to make this return string optional, right? And then you could go through some logic to say, hey, like if the password is empty, return nil, if it's great less than six characters, return nil. If it's equal to one, two, three, ret blah, blah, blah. You know, you could implement some logic which would look like this, guard password dot is empty, else return nil. And you would ne negate that or something. 
And this isn't necessarily a bad implementation. You could then go here and say like, uh, this is now optional. And then you could go down to your encrypted message and this is gonna give you an error. Um, and you could provide a default value and you could say like encryption failed, right? But the problem here is that you don't really know why it failed. So ideally what we would want here is the ability to throw some sort of error if something goes wrong in this function, right? So right now it's just returning nil, which like I said, isn't a bad implementation, but this could go wrong for all different kinds of reasons. And we don't know why it's going to go wrong, which is where error handling comes into play. So what we can do to solve this problem, guys, is mark this as a throwing function. So just go ahead and add throws up there. It's gonna throw an, uh, throw an error in the compiler, but what this is indicating to our compiler now is this function can potentially throw an error. So when you are writing a function that might encounter a problem, such as this one, you want your function to be able to throw an error. This allows the calling code to potentially catch that error and handle it appropriately, appropriately rather than crashing the app or just returning nil if something goes wrong, right? So now, when you have a throwing function, your compiler is going to recognize that here and it's gonna say, call can throw, but it is not marked with try. So do try and catch are directly linked to throwing functions, guys. So anytime a function can throw an error, we need to say, hey, let's try to do this, okay? So anytime you have a throwing function, when you call it, you need to try to do that thing, right? And then that's gonna give us another error. So it's gonna say errors from here are not handled. So we can make this try optional just to get rid of that error. But this now um, gives us a more sort of robust encryption API, right? Because now our function can throw an error. So how do we do something like that? Well, instead of returning nil here, we could potentially throw some random error. So you could say else throw, and then you could say like, you could just say like URL error dot bad URL or something, right? Like some generic error. Um, let's do this and see if that works. Yeah, so now this is throwing an error. So now potentially when you are trying to encrypt that message, you can catch that error, right? So let me just go ahead and add some notes up here for us guys that are super important to remember when working with this stuff. So a throwing function requires the use of try. Try requires do catch, which we are gonna implement here in a second, unless you use an optional try or a force try, which isn't safe, force unwrapping is almost never safe, or requires the use of optionals, which we see here. A function or property that tries, i.e. right here, this is a property that is trying to do something, can catch errors that are thrown and handle them. So I know that's a lot of terms being thrown at you at once, but with enough practice guys and a proper breakdown, which I'm gonna give you here, we are gonna understand this no problem. It's actually super simple. So let's imagine we don't want to make this optional really quickly. So we could remove that optional, we could remove it here, and we can remove it here, and then we can also get rid of this junk here, right? So now the reason this is nicer is because now we don't have to work with optional values, right? We have an error that we're gonna fix here in a second, but typically when I can avoid working with optionals, I, I like to, right? Because technically this doesn't have to return an optional string, it can just throw an error if something goes wrong. So now you guys are gonna get this error here in the compiler. Errors thrown from here are not handled. So Basically, do try and catch guys forces you to handle errors, okay? So anytime you have a throwing function, you need to implement error handling, and it's just a really robust way of ensuring that you handle errors in your code. The more error handling you have in your code, the better it's going to be, the safer it's going to be, and the easier it's going to be to debug and scale. If you have a very descriptive error handling framework or API. When stuff goes wrong, you're gonna be able to figure out why it's going wrong so that you can solve it, right? So, okay, how do we solve this problem? Well, one of the other ways was to say try with a force try. Go ahead and unwrap it. But you guys notice that it's now crashing, right? And the reason for that is because we're trying to force unwrap this guy here, but it threw an error. It didn't actually give us back our string. So when an error gets thrown, guys, the execution of our code stops right then and there. It's very similar to a return. 
So because it threw an error here, we never got a string back. We're trying to force unwrap that string and it crashes our preview because we have an empty password, right? We're making sure the password isn't empty before we go any further. It is, so it throws this error. So if we go ahead here and just add one, two, three, you guys will notice that everything is fine and dandy, right? So now it passes this guard check. It doesn't throw this error here. It proceeds to line 19 and 20 and encrypts our message. So that's awesome, right? So now we can see for obvious reasons why this is not a good implementation, right? If the user passes in an empty string and we try to force unwrap that, it's just gonna crash our code. So how do we avoid that? Well, this is where do and catch comes in. So we are gonna wrap this up in a do catch block, guys. We're gonna say do and catch. So now we are gonna do something, right? So the do is linked to the try. So we can say, go here and just take this line of code and paste it in there. And we can remove that force unwrap there. And now we can go here and we could say return encryption failed. So now let's go ahead and pass it an empty password. And you guys will notice that our encryption fails. We don't get any crashes and everything works just fine. So we've removed the need to work with optionals here, guys, because we implemented this throws keyword. So now this function can potentially throw an error. If the password's empty, it throws this error here. And then when we go and we try to encrypt our message, if it fails, it hits this catch block, right? So if you try to do something and it fails, the error is then caught. This throws, this catches, right? So that's the concept that we have here behind throwing and catching. That's sort of the reasoning behind these keywords and their meaning, right? This function can potentially throw an error. And then when you try to do something, the implementer, right? This is our last point here. Functions or property that tries can catch errors that are thrown and handle them. So this function is our thrower. This is our potential error catcher. And if it does catch an error, it just returns this encryption failure message. And essentially that's the nuts and bolts of do try catch and throws guys. Make sure you keep these notes with you for a reference. This basically boils down how do try catch and throws works in three sentences. So although this is good and we are implementing a throwable function now, I do wanna take this a step further and implement some more descriptive error handling, right? So right now we are just getting back encryption failed, which is great, but we still don't know what went wrong, right? So ideally we would either wanna display that to the user or use it ourselves as developers so that we can debug this code. So guys, as part of this catch block, something that Swift does implicitly is give you access to the error that came through. So you guys will notice here that I can say error, and it'll print out this error for me, but I actually don't need to add this code. Like I said, the Swift uh, compiler actually implicitly does that for you so we can get access to the error that is caught inside of this catch block. So really quickly guys, we are getting back some error description message, but it's super, super ugly. And obviously this error has no relation to what we are trying to do with this encryption, right? So what I want us to do is actually create our own custom error handling API, which is actually super, super simple. So let's go ahead and add this enum here. It's gonna be called encryption error. It's going to be of this error type, and we're gonna have empty and weak situations. So basically we're gonna have an empty password error and a weak password error, right? So now what we can do is because this conforms to this error protocol, I think this is a protocol, let's see. Yes, it's a protocol. So we can now say encryption error, let's th throw the encryption error dot empty. And you guys will notice now that it's coming back with just that raw value of empty, right? Encryption failed, empty. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and add one more guard statement here to make sure we don't have a weak password. So we'll say guard password dot count is greater than five. We want at least six characters in our password, else it's a weak password. And if I go here and say one, two, three, it gives me back weak. So that's awesome, right? We can implement some more custom error messages, but we're not gonna do that for the purposes of this tutorial, guys. What we can see now is that we are catching our error and it gives us back a more descriptive error message, which is awesome. So we can take this even one step further 
and you can catch specific types of errors, guys. So what I mean by that is I can say, hey, catch like encryption error dot weak. And then I can say encryption failed weak password, right? And then I can also do another catch and I could say empty, empty password, right? And let's go ahead and see. Uh, and so guys, ultimately you have to catch like all types of errors that could potentially come back. So we'll, we can go here and say catch return an unknown error occurred, right? So if it doesn't catch the error as these two types, it can then just sort of fall back to this default error, very similar to a switch with a default case, right? So here we can see weak password. If I go and say, just make that empty. Now it's an empty password. But obviously this isn't super scalable guys because if we had like like 50 different potential error cases here, we wouldn't wanna have to uh, like sort of do a catch statement for each individual one. So what we can do to replace this is let's just go ahead and delete this stuff. And let me just paste this in here. So we can say catch let error as our encryption error or whatever our custom error type is and then return a corresponding message that, and you, like I said, guys, you could implement more custom error handling messages up here, but we don't really need to do that. And if anything else goes wrong, it'll fall through to this catch block where an unknown error occurred. So ultimately guys, this is how we can utilize do try catch and throws to implement much more efficient, safer code that handles errors in a much better way, right? So by making functions throwable, you give your code the ability to signal when something goes wrong. This way you can handle the errors gracefully using do, try, and catch. And this concept is fundamental as we move forward into more advanced Swift topics like concurrency, where error handling is crucial for maintaining robust and reliable code. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. In the next one, we are going to hop into using async await, and we're going to see how all of this stuff that we just did here ties into using Swift concurrency and async await to implement more efficient error handling in our code bases. So thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.